Hey guys, so I wanted to give you guys an idea of how I would scale something like this. Now note, I've never actually scaled a project like this before, but this is more of an idea of how I would go about it or what I would start out if the situation ever arises. So the front end itself doesn't really need anything else um, or changes and I probably just would have to pay more money to Netlify um, or at least get off the free plan if it gets a ton of users. And then same with the Cloudflare and S3. No changes would need to happen here from a tech point of view. I would just have to pay more and more money as more users would use it. And so also this is just from a tech or an infrastructure point of view. Obviously you're also gonna want to be improving your queries and optimizing the code itself. But this is just from an infrastructure point of view, scaling that up. So the main bulk of what I'm gonna talk about today is this guy. So how do I scale the backend node Postgres Redis services? And this is going to be um, very much an overview and I'd like to in the future do a more in-depth um, when I get more involved with it. So this guy right now, let's pretend he's in a $5 digital ocean bucket and I have all three of those guys inside of there. So the first thing I would do is split those guys up. So I now have three DigitalOcean buckets. And now I might do this one at a time. Maybe I move Postgres out of the DigitalOcean bucket first, and then maybe write a second. But at some point, I'm going to split it up. So now I have three $5 machines. And the reason I'm doing that is because now I can separate each one of these processes, and I can find out what the bottleneck is. So maybe it's we're doing too many database queries and this guy is getting overloaded or we're storing too much data or something. And, or maybe it's our server itself or it could be Redis, we don't know. So splitting this up, we can see, um, or we might already know what's taking the most. So we can split this up and then if Postgres needs more help, we can bump him up to, for example, a $10 and then a $20. I guess it's 15, a $20 kid right here. And maybe I can at that point, these are just standard droplets, but use something like these optimized ones if it makes sense. So maybe I'll use some of these. And so you can kind of optimize the individual pieces now that they're broken out into three ones. So that's called horizontal scaling is when you get more of something. So I can either do vertical scaling or I increase the machine size. So for example, let's say Node.js is being overloaded. So I just mentioned how we can get more CPU, more memory for it, and that would be called vertical scaling. Or I could just get another Node.js machine. So let's say I have four buckets now. And so this is called a horizontal scaling. And I can just infinitely do this where I'm just grabbing more and more Node.js buckets to handle the scale. So I don't know what that magic number is, but there's some kind of point where it's more efficient to do vertical scaling and it's probably more efficient to do horizontal scaling. So I don't know what that number is. It may be specific per project, but it would make sense to scale up, for example, give this some more memory, and then it would be more expensive to just keep giving it memory rather than just creating another one. Also, the nice advantage of having no three you know, for example, servers here, let's say this kid crashes for whatever reason, we now still have two guys that can serve requests. Um, whereas if I just had a giant machine right here that takes, has a ton of memory, if it goes down, the whole server would go down. So that's another advantage of doing some horizontal scaling is your more uh, redundancy to faults and whatnot. And so that's pretty much how I would scale this thing up generally is uh, split these up into its three pieces and then scale each one so you can get multiple Postgres servers, multiple Redis guys, um, and you now of course as I get more and more of these things it's going to get more and more confusing and require more and more management. So I assume at some point I'm going to need to set up some kind of Kubernetes or Docker Swarm to be able to manage all these different machines because um, there's no way you want to do set up these machines manually, uh, start them up, because I don't think that would be a good idea. So 
I, and I probably am, I want to learn Kubernetes at some point uh, for this reason. And also it seems like pretty cool technology. Um, but yeah, so that's my general idea of how I plan on doing it. Uh, I'm curious if you guys have any input on this, what you think. And if anyone has any experience with scaling these things up, other techniques or strategies they would recommend, I'd love to hear about it.